everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the seventh Android tutorial. Um, last time we did the basic list view, and you can see in one of the graphics here, you've got a, that's very small, but you've got a picture. Let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. You've got a picture with some text. We're going to actually do that today, because like I said, list views can be very, very complex. I'm hoping this will be a bit of a quick tutorial, because I do have plans later, but uh, we're going to see what happens here. So let's start a new Android project. Let's call this App 7. And we're just going to leave the defaults on everything here. We're going to make an empty activity. And uh, Android will calculate the sun, moon, and stars. Sometimes I honestly wonder what it's doing under the hood. Um, I really should read up on that. But anyways, it's going to do a quick Gradle build. It's a lot bigger than it should be. And we're just going to move this around a little bit. The snap windows, as they're called, is kind of messing me up a little bit here. There we go. All right, so we've got just our bare bones basic activity here. We're going to get rid of this hello world because, well, we're beyond hello world at this point. And we are going to go find list view. There you are. I had to lean forward for that. I have this unnatural habit. I had LASIK uh, a while ago, well, over a year ago. And uh, I'm still used to wearing glasses, so I'm leaning forward. So there's the code right here. And you can just see list view is going to take up the whole thing. We're going to give this an ID of LST main. Whoops. And there we go. And as soon as we give it our ID and it creates it, it puts in a what's called a visual template here. Um, that's actually not really what the items are going to look like. Um, we're going to get to that. So let's crack open our layout folder here. And you can see there is our main activity that we were just looking at. We want to make uh, essentially what's called a list item. Um, we're going to go new, and we are going to have to hunt and pick through here. Whoops, layout resources file. Yeah, we really didn't have to hunt and pick too far. <laughs> All right, so um, hmm. this may take me a minute here. Not used to doing it this way. Forgive me. Let's call this list item. We're going to give it linear layout, and we're going to put it in the layout directory. Honestly, these available qualifiers, I haven't read up on these too much, so I'm not really sure what those mean. I'll have to read up on those, but we're just going to hit OK for now. Really not used to doing it that way, forgive me. And as you can see, it makes a, another layout. Now what we're going to do, let's flip back to the main activity here, is you see these items, item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4, we're going to make our own template that each item is going to follow, and that's what this list item is. So let's flip into this guy, and I want to just kind of look at the code here, make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, yeah, we want to set this to horizontal. Um, there we go. And the reason why we do that is if it was vertical, they would stack down. We want them to go left to right. So what we want to do here is we want to get, if I can find it through here. I See, I miss where Cute Widget has this little search thing where you could search for them. We want to get an image view in here. Did it actually do it or it didn't do it? It didn't do it. We're just going to type it then. Forget it. Actually, you know what? I like drag and drop. We're just going to do IC launcher. Why not? And see, there it goes right there. I didn't want to do a lot of typing on XML because it's quite frankly bores me to death. And then we're going to get a text view and we're just going to pop this text view over here. And you can see how it's kind of got this 50-50 thing. So we're just going to grab this guy and just kind of scale him over a little bit. And then we'll grab this. And we need to give these some identifiers here. So we're going to give this uh, AMG item. I don't know where I come up with the names for these things. i got to do better at that, I guess. And TXT item, short for text item. And we're going to modify this a little bit here. We're going to go bold. And let's give this a bigger size. Let's go 18. Uh, let's go 30. Maybe not 30. Maybe 24. Why not? All right. And we are going to look at this here. Where's the padding on this bad boy? Uh, this part I probably will write because I can't find it through here. Although I'm probably looking right at it. Hmm. 
We'll just flip in here. And we're going to do... Oops. We're going to go padding top. We want to pad this a little bit. Now, if you don't understand what 5DP means, we'll explain that in a future video. Just right now, just understand that this is not a pixel measurement. And you can see how it drops it down a little bit. We're going to actually do 10DP. You can see how it drops down even further. So that is the rough template that each one of our items is going to follow here. Now, it's very important that when you do this, you have an identifier for the picture and the text box. Sometimes people forget that. I forget that all the time. We're going to go ahead and kill that. Whoops, we're going to go ahead and kill that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, let's see here. Let's see. Cannot type hash map. There we go. Um, now you should remember what a hash map is from your intro to Java classes. And this is one of those cases where you were going to actually use it. Um, I like using maps um, instead of arrays because arrays are a little cumbersome. So you're going to have to have a key and a value pair here. So to do this, we're going to say items equals, whoops, it's hash map, not hash. And we're going to say new hash map. And we want to give this an integer. And remember, these cannot take primitive types. So you can't do int. You have to do the actual integer. So that's going to be our actual items here. Now we're going to... List view, we'll call this LST main because that's the name of our list view. And we're going to say LST main equal list view. Find view by ID, r.id. This is kind of the boring part of the code. LST main. So we're just you know getting our resource to the list view and actually casting it into an, an actual control or an actual view, if you will. Um, now we're going to populate our map. We're just going to very simply say for and i equal zero, i is less than five. I plus plus. And we're just going to say items dot put. And here we're going to say i because that's our key. Remember we have an integer, and then we want a string for the value. So we want to say item number and then plus i so really that's all we're doing now comes the interesting bit let's save this let's actually give this a good build make sure we haven't screwed up on this so far and it looks like it built just fine i've got some icons somewhere here we go and we're just going to take these and we're going to copy these very important that you copy, not cut. And we're going to go to our drawable folder. If you don't have one, you can actually just right click on res, go show in files, and that'll bring open your resources where they're physically located on disk, and you can just add a drawable folder. But anyways, you're going to right click on drawable, and you're just going to go to paste. And it's going to say copy specified files, and it's going to give you the actual path, and you're just going to say OK. And that copies the actual icons that we got in here. Puts them into your Android project and registers them so that when, I shouldn't say register, it just puts them in there so that when you build, the R variable actually has those. So now you can say r.drawable, whoops, dot, and then there's your icons. That is how we're going to actually access the icons. Now, before we do any of that, let's run this, and I'll show you that it does absolutely nothing I just want to get the emulator up and booting make sure it actually runs it was giving me fits last night when I was doing the uh, the pre version of this all right
right, great. It went. Come on, emulator, you can do it. I have this uh, truck. It's not a truck. It's a Jeep, and I love this thing to death. And it's making some noise, so I'm like really afraid to drive it. Who's texting me? I'm doing a video. Go away. Sorry, my daughter was texting me. All right, so as you can see, it does absolutely nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to populate this now to get those items in so it shows an image and a text. We have to use what is called a, you guessed it, anybody? You have to use what's called an array adapter. So let's kill that application. Let's close that. And let's go here to Java. And we're going to go new Java class. And we're going to call this custom adapter now this is going to be a fair amount of typing um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend whoops the array adapter and you notice how this is templated array adapter type so what we need to do here and this is going to look a little funky if you're not used to it is we want to actually um, give this a type of hash map and a lot of the tutorials out there you'll find won't do that. They'll do like a string and then you'll hand it an array. Um, and there's a reason for that. We want to actually take this hash map that we just populated and give it to the array adapter. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So we're going to say hash map. And there's our key value pair. And we're going to say integer string. And you notice how it's already getting cranky with us. No default constructor. Okay, well, let's make a default constructor here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say private hash map. We'll give it our key value pair here, um, or types actually, sorry. String. Yeah, I really love that Jeep. I mean, it's anybody who's got a vehicle they've ever just really loved. I mean, you understand what I mean. It's like your baby almost. All right, so we're going to have our hash map and our context. Um, we haven't really talked about context too much. Context, um, it's like having a conversation with somebody. In what context are you talking about? You know, I was walking around in my underwear. Well, in what context? Were you walking around in your underwear in your house or in the middle of a supermarket? That's a context. So in programming, you have to know the context of, which is pretty much translates to what view are you talking about or what activity are you talking about? because um, everything could have its own context, which I think internally really relies on scope. If you remember your uh, your scope classes from Java. All right, so we're going to do control O and mm -hmm. we're not going to do that actually. Sorry about that. We're going to go hover over this. Try and get that little, there it is, that little icon to pop up. And we're going to create constructor and we're just gonna go with this first one, um, context and resource. And then we're gonna add this in here and because I'm really sick of typing this out. We're just gonna grab this. And we are going to say, boom, and we're gonna call that map. So there's our constructor. And now we are going to just say items equal to map. There's a whole lot of memory copying going on here. That's one thing I'm not really thrilled about with some of these languages. Now, some of them internally, like I think Java actually does internally, um, will actually use a pointer instead of copying. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but I think in the olden days it copied and now it actually uses pointers under the hood. So if you know anything about C++, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so now we have our context, which we're gonna need later on, and we actually have a uh, reference to the map Reference or pointer? That's up for debate. Anyways, sorry, I'm thinking. I miss C++ really bad. Get count. So we're going to add get count. We need that because the array adapter will not show any items unless we actually return a count. Um, so if you're following along and you skip this step and none of your items show, this is why. Uh, okay, so now we're going to return items.size. That'll ensure that our array adapter actually does what it is supposed to do. All right, now, this is where the actual magic happens. We need to go 
Control O on your keyboard, and we're going to say Git View. Now notice how this says um, in position convert view, which is a view group, and it returns a view. So what are these things? Well, remember a view is pretty much anything on the screen. So what we're really going to be returning is this list items.xml, this guy. We're going to basically create an instance of this and shove it back, or I should say return it back. To do that, we have to do a little bit of magic under the hood here. Why is this thing suddenly missing return statement? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so we have to use what's called a layout inflator, which is kind of a complex topic, but um, basically a layout is an XML file, which we've seen. An inflator is just a bit of code or class that actually takes that and turns it into an object that we can work with. So we're gonna say inflator equal layout, see? Layout inflator. What? Why are you doing that? Damn you. There. Copy and paste. Forget it. There. Con dot get system service. And we're going to say context dot layout inflator service. Now, if this looks like some weird voodoo black magic code, it's because it kind of is. Basically, what we're saying here is get a layout inflator, which is a, a class that's going to turn this XML file into something we can work with. And then we're going to cast it here. And then we're saying con, which is the context that we're going to hand this custom adapter, which the context is actually going to be this guy, our main activity. Confusing, I know. I'm very sorry. I didn't create this. Google did, they're much smarter than I am. Um, anyways, so then we're going to take that context of the main activity and we're going to get a system service called the layout inflator service. What does all that mean? Basically, it means that there is a bit of code running in the memory of the device that has a pointer in the context that is called the layout inflator service. So it's not us actually creating an instance constantly, it's us getting the device's instance of it and then using that instance. Not 100% accurate, but I think it makes the point. Remember, these things are designed to save memory, to save power. So inflator dot, and then we're going to actually inflate. Now, what are we inflating? R dot, I have to look at my notes, sorry. Layout dot uh, list items. This was actually a, a challenging tutorial for me to write. I did not like doing this one, so I'm trying to do good by you guys here. So we're just going to do a little bit of magic there. We're going to say we want to inflate that list item thing, so we're going to turn that into usable code. All right, now we want to actually make a text view. We'll call this txt, and this is going to be, you guessed it, text text view, and we're going to say, whoops, we have to do the row dot find view by ID, r dot, and I'll explain this here in a second, just let me finish typing this out before I lose my place here in my notes, txt item. So what are we really doing here? We're taking the inflator, we're getting a, we're getting a reference to or a pointer to the layout flator, inflator service that's running on the device. We are then grabbing a view. Remember, a view is pretty much anything shown on the screen. And we're calling that row. And we're saying inflator, inflate this XML file, this guy. Once we've quote unquote inflated that or turned that into something we can work with, this guy, we're then saying grab the text view out of that thing. So we're taking list view, find view by ID, and we want to get that TXT item, which is this right here. If that's not confusing, I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, so let's let's continue here. Sorry, I, I literally once I figured that out, I had to laugh. I went, wait, what? That makes no sense. But then when you start thinking in what I call Google language, then it actually makes a lot of sense. Sometimes I wish Google would hire me just so I could get smarter. Row dot. All right, find view by ID. We're gonna say r dot id dot 
item main. So now we've got that image view on there also. So, and if you had other controls in here, or controls, sorry, other views in here, you'd want to grab those as well. So basically we got, you know, uh, reference to that image and that text box, or sorry, text view. I'm so used to other languages. We're going to close that, close that, because we don't need those anymore. All right, we're almost there. We have a little bit of magic that we have to do here. All right, so we're going to say, yes, that was actually me rubbing my hands together because I'm getting a little excited because I want to I want to get this done. Items dot get, and we want to get the position. Hold on a second. Sorry, my phone. Two string. So basically what we're doing is we're taking that map and we're saying we want to set the text here. And just for the sake of argument, we're going to return the row. Whoopsie. And we're going to build run this just so we can see if this thing actually works. And there it goes. And all right, so it built, but it's not displaying anything. Let's fix that super quick here. Let's flip back into our main. And we're going to say, whoops. How many times can I say whoops in a video? Custom adapter, adapt, adapter, equal new custom adapter. This resource zero, because we don't really care. And then we want to give it the items. So what we're really doing here is we're creating an instance of the custom adapter that we've been working on here. And we're giving it this as the context. So when we think of context, you have to think of, you know, what perspective are you talking from? Well, we're talking from the main activity. So when we're in here using context, and you'll see context a lot in Android tutorials, the context is our main activity, whereas the view context in get view is a different context. So we want to kind of flip those back and forth. And if that gets very confusing, there's like a whole three hour class on YouTube about it. And then LST main dot set adapter and then adapter. So by doing this, what we're really doing here is we're saying, all right, make a map, or I'm sorry, hash map, fill it with values. We need some way of rendering those values. So we're going to use a custom adapter and then we're going to say the list view set the adapter. We're going to set the adapter here. So let's actually stop, run this again. And when this thing pops up, we won't see any graphics, but yeah, we'll see the default that we put. Now what we need to do is actually find these icons here. See how we got icon 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? Um, we want to actually put those in there. So they'll be all different icons. This takes a little bit of magic here. The problem we're trying to solve is we're trying to take the r.drawable and then whatever the number is, you notice how that's code, that's actual, you know, objects. We want to be able to get that from a string. And that kind of just, I'm just going to level with you. It just completely pissed me off. It took me like, a, I want to say 20 minutes, actually a lot longer than that. I don't want to lie. It took me about half an afternoon to figure this out. Because most of the tutorials I found on the internet were just dead wrong. Or they were ancient and they just didn't work. And that's been a big... Um, big problem I've had with Android is a lot of the tutorials out there are just really old. So anyways, we're going to make a context and we're going to say the image, the image view, we're going to get the image views context. And we're going to say int ID because we want the identifier because that's what everything in the resource is, is an identifier. And we're going to say context dot get resources dot get identifier. And then we're going to say ICO plus position and we want to get a drawable item. Make sure you spell that correctly. I did that wrong one time. And we want to get this in the context dot get package name. Sorry. And then finally, we want to image dot set image resource ID. So what are we doing here? Essentially, we're saying get the context of the image view, convert the actual string 
icon, whatever the position is, the position is getting from here. So whether it's item one, item two, item three, actually it'll be zero base, item zero, item one, item two, you get it. We want the drawable resource, and then we want the context to get the package name. Now the package is this entire application. You can actually get resources in other packages if your security allows it. There's all sorts of other hurdles you gotta jump through, but you can do it. Um, and then finally, we're gonna say image set image resource ID. This is the exact same thing as saying r dot drawable dot icon zero or icon one or whatever. We're basically just converting the string into the ID that Android understands. So we'll stop our application, make sure it's stopped, save our work, and let's run this bad boy. See what happens here. Boom, there you go. So now we have our individual icons with our text. And from that, you can modify this template however you need it. Um, you can put buttons, you can put pretty much anything in there that you want. It's kind of crazy that what you can do with these. But that shows you basic item templating and how to handle with it. And there, you know, it acts just like a normal thing. You could actually put in code to handle the on-click and all that stuff like we've done in the previous tutorial. Whew. That was a mouthful. Well, um, for the source code for this and other programs, other tutorials, you go out to my website, voidrealms.com under tutorials, and then I gotta alphabetize that. Under Android, I'll pop it in right here. And if you're still watching, go to the contact button. There is the Void Realms Facebook group. There is, I think to date, almost 1,200 or just over 1,200 programmers, all walks of life, all different languages, and we all just help each other out. Um, it's getting to the time of the year where I need to renew my website subscription. So if this helped you, the site is 100% funded by your donations. Um, anything above and beyond, uh, just paying for the website, I donate to charity. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this educational and entertaining.